quick deal. We got uh, what we went over last week, and then we'll get into what uh, what we're going to do in lesson two this week. And so we're going to go over this real quickly, just to catch up. And it's really simple stuff, but it's something uh, where we need to grow in the Lord. And really, I was going to sing a song tonight. Somebody asked me to sing, but I'll wait till Sunday, man. And uh, anyway, we uh, we're going to be in Hebrews, and so get your Bibles out and turn to Hebrews chapter eleven. And let's uh, start off with God's Word, of course, is what we need to do, because it's all about His Word. It's where our faith stands in, is God's Word. And I'm not like uh, digging in God's Word. I like uh, rereading and, and restudying and, and having this knowledge, and it's something that we need, we got to have, if we're going to be strong in our faith. And, and so in, in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, it says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. And what we'll be on tonight is verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Let's pray real quick tonight. Lord, we love you and thank you for this time we have together. Thank you, God, for all the, all the requests. And, and Lord, we just pray, God, you touch us. Help us in our faith. Lord, help us grow through your word and these lessons. Lord, use me. Use this church for your honor and glory. In your precious holy name I pray. Amen. As we look at this tonight, we're just going to go quickly over it. And really, it's a, it's a complete, complete summary of faith is what we're going to go over for about 23 weeks. And so I'm going to get this uh, out. I want us to grow as we go through the people of faith and really what's going on in their lives and how God used them. And God wants to use each and every one of us. See, there's a plan for our life, amen. And, and the more uh, faith we have, the more God can use us and the more His plan can work out in our life. Because this is what I believe we're all going to stand before God one day. And, and then uh, uh, when we were faithful and we're walking in the Word and we're walking in the Spirit and God was able to use us, we're going to see all that. But we're also going to see uh, when we weren't. Amen. I believe that we're all going to be judged at that time. And that's why it's going to have to wipe away all tears. But in this right here, the complete summary of faith, I just quickly want to go over just a few things and part of it and, and, and see in the introduction. There is so much abuse of faith is what it's talking about and how much people are using it today and many people are, are trying to trust, uh, uh, trying to, to, to give up trying to trust in God alone and having that faith in what God can do because I believe when we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us, I believe we have God in this world and we're supposed to trust Him. Uh, you know, and I believe that a lot of things can be accomplished and we're going to go over a few scriptures tonight that show us this, but some people put faith in the preacher or the priest, it says priest in here, they try to be funny, and a guru or, the, or, their, or their church, and man, our faith is in none of that, it's all in Him, amen, and when we start putting our faith in Him and trusting Him, we start seeing big things happen, and then when we start walking in the Spirit as a church and everybody starts getting their focus on God, we see big things happen, but in, in E here, uh, and it says if there is anything we all can learn from Hebrews chapter 11. God rewards that blank is faith. When we believe God, He rewards us. Amen. Now we're going to see tonight that God, our, our prayers don't always get answered the way we think they ought to. And I believe if you do believe God, there's power in faith. I believe there is, but there's a way God teaches us through our faith how to believe Him. And really it's through His will. We'll see that tonight. But in, in the second part, now I want to get to this quickly because I want to get to the next lesson. So I'm just going to quickly go over this. The, the first thing we can learn uh, from our biblical faith is, is, A, is faith has substance. It's something we have, man. That's what it says. There's substance of things hoped for. We have something in our faith. Do you have something tonight? Because see, He's inside of you. If you're truly saved, we're born again. we got the Holy Ghost, amen. And I believe in the Spirit of God, and I believe God's Spirit works through us and I'm asking him to work through this church tonight amen and from here on out but it says in B faith has evidence there ought to be evidence that you have faith in your life people ought to see somehow that you may not be perfect none of us are and we'll see that as we go through the these heroes of faith uh, they weren't perfect hey none of us perfect but we ought to have fruit from our faith that ought to come through secondly and number two there 
the Christian's faith if we're thinking about this and we want to point out or point to faith and we want to see God do something. The Word of God is God. It's through the Bible. It's through uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But skip down to verse to, to number three. There is the, therefore faith is, and you could just put evidence, but I wrote the substance of things hoped for in the evidence. Uh, it's enough to just, your last line there, believe it. Do you believe God tonight? Don't you believe His Word? Now you start reading all this stuff, you think, wow, how did all that happen? But God's good. And, and I'm, I'm going to skip some of this because I want to get through and get to our second lesson. But I want you all to see and, and see here, it says it is in, in your next on the next page. You've got to flip over we did front and back on this lesson. It is agreeing with what God sees as possible, even though our mind says it's impossible. You know, you think, man, it's impossible to park the Red Sea. Really? You know, and, and of course, doubters say that that doesn't really happen. Even though now they even find, uh, they're finding cherry wheels and all stuff that's down there to prove that they drowned it up the Egyptian army. You know what? But they, uh, people still don't want to believe it. Them scientists think they know everything. But God did it. He dried the ground up. Praise God. He makes the blind to see. We see God doing great things. But in number four, not talking about Bible, but believing the faith. The words of Almighty God. We know in Titus 1-2 it says, The hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Do you believe in that eternal life? Amen. I believe it's eternity. That we're just a soul. That this body's just here like a vapor for a little time. And that's not really you, Jacob. That's not really you sitting there. you got this body, but you're in there. I can't see your spirit, but I can feel it. I can know, I know how you are. I can walk up to a Christian sometimes and just feel that they're, they're brothers. Amen. Have you ever done that? Have you ever been somebody in the store? All of a sudden, you just, you just feel it. You start talking to them about Jesus. Man, I love when that happens because it proves our faith. But as we see and we go through tonight, scientifically, and number four, historically, scientifically, and prophetically, God has showed us that all this is true. All, all three of those. The proofs show us that faith in what the Bible promises is only faith to have. That's all we can believe in. We can't believe in no man. We can't believe who's going to fix America. Who's going to fix the world? Only God can. Amen? And so as we look through faith. So you get down to your various kinds of faith. I'll go through these quickly. We're not going to turn to all the papers. But if you have this paper, go home and look them up. But, and, and, and number one in the various kinds of faith is when they were in the boat, you know, and it, the, the storms come and, and, they're, and they're thinking they're going to die. And they go up there and wake up Jesus and Mark writes on there. He, uh, uh, he records it as Jesus tells them they have no faith. Hey, why is it that you have no faith? And so your first one, there's no faith. They're, they're these different kinds of faith. Some people just don't have it. They don't believe Jesus. And then the second one is the same story. Matthew wrote down that Jesus said, he records. Isn't that funny how we all see things differently? Amen. He says you have little faith. And, and sometimes people just got a little bit of faith. And then we go down to number three, and it really gets to where in James 1, if you ask anything in, in God's name, and he, he talks about having a wavering faith. Some people have a wavering faith. Man, don't believe today, but tomorrow, kind of, I don't know if you can do that or not. And, you know, God can't fix a problem in that. He just let that man think he's going to receive nothing from the Lord because we've got to believe God. That's the kind of faith we've got to have in our church. We've got to believe God. Amen? And then, of course, number four is a strong and active faith in Romans 4.20. And then I like the one on number five. It's an unfeigned faith, real and genuine, as it describes in First and Second Timothy, verse five. But and finally, in Matthew eight, the great faith. When the centurion soldier came to Jesus and said that his servant uh, was sick of palsy and he's going to die, and he says, "Well, I'll come to your house," and he says, "I'm not worthy that you come to my house. Just say the word, and you'll be healed." And he said, "I haven't seen any greater faith." And nowhere in Israel. And so we think in this, nowhere in Jerusalem. And you think of this, that that's great faith. I believe what God says. Do you believe it? And just like anything else, even if we have great faith, even if we really believe God, it needs to grow. That's why I chose this class. And I'm a preacher, so I'm going to preach while I teach. Amen. That's what I do. Amen. And I, I want you to get it. I want it to grow. I want God's spirit to move into this church. Amen. I want to see something great happen. But you know, what's possible of possessing true biblical faith? 
what it does to a person. It says in one, it gives them hope. It supplies the hope we need. And two, it, it, it provides the evidence we need. I was thinking about getting on the old folder and put these in. And as, we think, as we kept it so you can keep them and have the whole class as we go through. And then and, and thirdly, it brings rest. God says he gives his beloved sleep. When you believe God, and even though the world could be falling down, that's why Jesus said when the boat was flipping around and these gods were, hey, he's sleeping. He knows he's got this thing under control. It was a test for them. And then as we see that happen, and, and, uh, we, and we, man, I believe it. I believe all the story. But as we look at this, we think of this tonight. And this is what I gave you. It, 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 faith, it causes a hunger to trust God more. If you have faith, you'll be willing, wanting to experience its limits and not just dabble in it. And I asked you last week to make a list in your mind or whatever you did of some things that only that you need done that only God can do. And then maybe some things that you want done that only God can do. And, 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 I, and if you weren't here last week, you do that. But does anybody have one of those they want to share with us tonight? Jimmy? Well, one thing we can't do that I can't do is uh, there's lots of things that they always come in when a lot of people there. He, he doesn't have the righteousness for our, for his name's sake. Right. We can't do that without him. That's right. He has to lead us. Amen. Anybody got anything else they'd like to share? Sit down. What we can understand by faith. What 
can we get from God by faith? And we'll start in verse 3 of chapter 11 again. It says, through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the Word of God. And so sometimes we don't, people don't get that, but not just this world, all of them, man, they're everywhere we look around. If you think about what the scientists can see today in the planets, and they're looking far off in these galaxies, and they see things everywhere, and man, they're wondering how all this get here. Well, it's right there in the Word of God, amen? If they just believe God, and they keep looking for other things, but it's not going to work. Faith believes God's Word. Do you believe His Word tonight? Amen? Faith believes the Bible as it is written. And God rewards us when we just accept what He says. No matter how impossible it seems. You know, you think, man, how God do that? How's He sitting up in the third heaven beyond anything they can see with a telescope? How's He up there and still seeing everything? He can hear everything, everything being recorded. And He can help each one of us. He can love us all at the same time. Amen? And He can come into it to the, the 1,500 churches across the world and send His Spirit into them and have that place blown up uh, for His honor and glory. How's He do that? Because He's God. Amen? And He can because He's, he's, he's infinite. He can do anything. And so as we look at this, and according to Hebrews 11.3, He rewards our faith with an understanding that is far beyond what scientists can figure out. If you turn to that scripture, uh, 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 look at Psalms 119 with me. Hold your finger there because we'll be back. Psalms 119, it says in, in, in verse 99, I have more understanding, David says, than all my teachers. For the testimonies are my for thy testimony are my meditation, and he says in one hundred I have more I have understanding more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. So he gives us two ways to have more understanding by keeping his precepts and and, I, and because he he keeps his testimonies. It's his meditation. He's meditating on God's word, not just reading it. He's thinking about that thing and then he's meditating on it, memorizing it. So our two answers there, I can have more uh, uh, wisdom than my teachers. And so, hey, if you're in public schools or anywhere you go, you can have more wisdom than your teachers. And, the, and then even the ancients, which means that the elders and the old men, uh, you can have more than the ancients and have this, this faith by just believing what God wrote. If we just believe that church and Bible believers understand and comprehend these great truths, Greater even than science can grasp. I blows my mind today on what they're finding and the things they're finding, but God's let them see different things out there that are like look to them impossible. And they see these great things happen. And hey, it says in the last times, hey, there's going to be wonders out there in the stars and the skies. They're going to see more and more things. And as we go through this, you know, I hope this will increase our faith. But what follows in the study is uh, about what Christians can understand simply. Because God tells us to say amen. And so I, I want us just to get real simple. Uh, and, and A, faith understands. Uh, it really, if you, if you look at that Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the space of the waters. And, and He said, let there be light. And there was light. And so in the beginning, God. You know what? We believe this in the beginning. I, I put in here, I just put faith understands the Word of God. If we have faith, we understand the Word of God. Just like he says in John 1. And you turn there to John 1 with me because a lot of people don't have that memorized or the ones that are quoted. But we should memorize this. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. we got to believe that. Do you believe that tonight? The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without, it, without Him uh, was not anything made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. It's where our light comes from. It's His Word. We understand, that as according to our Scripture here that we're on, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. That's what your, your blanks filled with. The worlds were framed by the Word of God. As we look at this, and we see it tonight, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. See, these guys are looking for how all this great things happen and how we ended up here. And you notice we've been seeing a lot more uh, things and post about flying saucers lately. And you know, I believe that's a big hoax. Amen. I, I think that God made anything. If there is an alien, God made it. Amen. I just believe 
think that is if he made it. He says world, so there could be another world out there. But God spoke it on one point, and Jesus created it all out of nothing. You know what? I believe that, that he just came from the word of his mouth. And Colossians, and you turn there to with me tonight, and i still got some time. I'm trying to move, praise God. I can't believe we burned up that much time already. Hey, time flies when you're having fun, right? Amen. They are supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> Listen, at Colossians 1.16 says this, For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. And so He gave us this, that Jesus did this. Modern scientists believe everything we see in the universe all got here and fully matured, it happened by an accident. Hey, when you went, when I went to school, I got in trouble, hey, amen. I had to go to the principal's office and get a paddle. And I think, I think from what I heard, that Alan used to give kids spanking back in the day, amen. And so I got mine because when they got to this to teach us this in school, I said something I wasn't supposed to because I didn't believe it. They said that, that if something as small as a period on the dot of this paper just exploded. And all this is here. I thought, man, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and I grew up rough, so I said some things that wasn't good. I had to go get a spanking from the principal. But listen, they didn't kick me out, praise God. But listen, I don't believe that. I believe God said, amen. And I believe that everything we see is because God said it. How do we get male, female? Ugly and pretty, amen. Hair and no hair, praise God. And we see this, amen. It's all, and we're all fearfully and wonderfully made. And I think we're, we're made the image of God. Amen. And nobody might have hair in heaven, praise God, kid. We might all be bald headed when we get there. And we don't know. I think this, we won't be looking at that. We're just going to be glad we're there. But as we see this, the entire universe, worlds, not just world, but worlds all just appeared out of nowhere. Fully mature, ready to go from day one. The, the Bible believer understands it. Amen? Do you understand it tonight? And listen, as we think about this, there's a scientist who got saved. And I may show this video next week. And it's a video of a scientist that, that all the way up to his 60s, man, he didn't believe in God, didn't believe in nothing, he studied science. But all of a sudden, he started finding some animals. There's well, no way they could have been involved. They had, everything had to be there. For them, and I got a video on that. He shows us the animals and the insects and all these insects and how they grow and how all had to be there. There's no way they could have evolved into what they are. And he became a believer. And so he gives his testimony. And I'd like y'all to see that video. If we can find it, uh, we, we will show that next week. But a person who believes the book were at least 500 years past what them scientists believe. You know what? We're, we're, we're smarter than they are. Because we believe in the living God. Amen? And they're going to find out soon uh, that all what they're believing is a bunch of hocus pocus. But anybody who believes this book and has this book in their hand, amen? If you have your Bible tonight, I hold that thing up. Hold it up, praise God. You know what? It's powerful. Amen. You understand? It was, this is what created what we're standing on. It's powerful. We have the same power that created the entire universe and the three heavens that we we can have, we're living in the first one. And so we have the we have the first heaven around us where the firmament of the air is where the birds fly. The second heaven is where the moon, star, sun is, and then the third heaven's up there where, where the Lord is sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercessions for us. And you wonder some of the things that must be talked about in there, and I think God is merciful when he looks down upon men and sees the things and the nonsense that's going on, and he's still blessing America. Can you believe that tonight? And we should say, praise the Lord tonight, amen. Can you all say that with me? Praise the Lord. Hey, <laughs> he's been so good to us. He's putting up with us. But anybody who believes the book, we have this power. And he says this in Matthew 21, 22. And I'm going to get a little deeper. And this don't turn there. I'll tell you real quick. It says, in all things, what service you shall ask, believing you shall receive. Right. Now, I believe this, that we can believe and we can see great things happen, but we're supposed, still supposed to pray in God's will. And so Amen. I teach on that maybe soon. It says, well, hey, not everybody's going to get healed of cancer. I have prayed in tears over people that God didn't heal, but man, great things happen from their death. You know what? All things, and we'll get there real quick, work together for good to them to love the Lord and Him who are called according to His purpose. But listen, faith understands... By Him, all things consist. Or you can just put in that blank 
consistence. Faith understands consistence. The universe is a miracle. And we see what's happening and what's going on, stars flying around. And, uh, but the fact it is still here is also a miracle. That we're still here is also a miracle. And all the things that are happening to the earth, look, this place ain't getting no better. It's getting worse, say again. And God told us this will be going on in the end times. So we got to believe Him and we got to be ready. But He used uh, His Word to create everything. And consistency, and number two, looks down, if you look down, and it means holding something together like glue. And so what God's doing, He's holding all this together like glue. Amen? And so number three says on that same point, why doesn't everything just fly apart? Hey, I think I explained this on the video. It's a very, very uh, uh, smart uh, older fella. And he's small. He's a little guy. But he puts this stuff out there. And, you know, Bible-believing Christians know why. God's holding this all together. And he's holding it all together. And he started this thing with his word. And he's going to end it with his word. His word is, I believe, when we come back with him and, and it's time to, to finish the thing up, we're not going to have our swords out cutting people up. I don't believe that. It says he's going he's to end it with the sword of his mouth. He's just going to say, die. And everybody's going to die. We're not going to have to labor. I think that at that time, everything's going to look different uh, to us. But, man, I'm praying hard for the lost people in this world. And there's a bunch of them. But Jesus is the glue that all the scientists are trying to find. And they're trying to find what's making all this work, what's holding. They know we're just suspended in space. How did that happen? How we're just sitting here, we're not falling. Because God, amen, God created it. Do you believe that tonight? Amen. 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 He's what Albert Einstein referred to as the strong force. I don't know if Albert Einstein ever got Jesus or not, but he knew something was holding this up and they couldn't figure out what. I believe it, it really, if you, go to, if you go to Hebrews 1 with me real quick, Y'all got a little time. Gun smoke won't start with till 8 30. Amen. Listen, it says right here in, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, God who in sundry times, different times, it says, and in diverse manners, that's various ways, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. He says, Have in these last days spoken unto us by a son whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, by Jesus Christ, by his, by his words. Listen. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. It doesn't that give you goosebumps, amen? It does mean by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, set down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And so it's by the word of his power that he's holding us up. And I'm thinking... You know, what's going on in the world, what we're seeing going on, I'm praying that God would move much. And I believe there's going to be, uh, you know, at the end times of falling away, I believe it's already been happening. But I believe God can still move in this. He's holding the chair you're sitting in together, which it says in number six, and you have faith when you sit down, that chair was going to hold you up, right? Amen. Uh, well, we should believe God that much, at least. He holds you together. And not just your skin and your heart, but... Your molecules and your cells. He holds us up. Amen. According to Isaiah 41.10, this is what God says. Fear thou not, for, for I am with thee. And be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And God holds us up. As we go through this world and things come our way, a lot of bad news comes our way. I was expecting to hear some bad news yesterday when I was going through uh, that physical, but I got some good news. Praise the Lord. He might have fixed me before I got in there, but I believe God's working. He's doing something. And we, we can hold, He can hold you together. And I think this, it's not, no, nothing's a problem for God. We, but, but us, we're the problem. And we got to trust Him. He's always working towards a great goal no matter what's happening in our life. When we go through things and we see people hurting and we had all the prayer requests coming, but God's working all things together for, for good. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe that even the most horrific things we see? You know, I've heard of people die. I've seen some horrific deaths from 30 years on the fire department. You wouldn't believe I, I went through all the stories and things that happen to people, but all things are working together for good. And there's a faith that we're all one day going to go see God. But a Bible believer living by faith in the promises of God will stay faithful to God. No matter how hard or dark it may get. Now we're talking about those that are living by faith. 
But there's there's a way that because people do it all the time, we're up and down, and we're going to go through some of that with some of these these uh, heroes of faith as we go up and down this life. You know, some days we're up here and you're driving to work. Hallelujah, man! You're listening to Christian music, praising the Lord, and next day you're you're chewing the guy that cuts you off. You know, you, we're we're up and down with our with our time and then, and how things affect us in this world. And I I want us to walk in the Spirit more. And so I believe we can. I believe if we're walking in the Spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh just like the Bible says. And so that means we need more of God if we're going to be stronger. And this church is going to be stronger. Faith understands that next blank, God's in charge. Do you believe that tonight? Amen. He's in charge, church. He's in charge. He's in charge of everything. Let me read 2 Peter to you real quick. That gives us that example in chapter 3, he says this in, in, verse, in verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. You're thinking of that. And so it ain't going to be a thief to us. In which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works there, uh, the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, man? It's raw. That's raw straight out there telling you, hey, this stuff's coming. What are you going to do? Looking for and hasting on to the coming day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. Notice heavens are plural there. And the elements shall melt with fervent feet heat. But it says in verse 13, Nevertheless, we according to His promise look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Hey, I'm looking for the new stuff. I want the new heaven. I, I want God to come get us. I'm ready to go, amen? And you know what? I want my family to go. But you know what? God knows. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I pray for our leaders and their souls every day. I pray, God, you save them. But I pray your will will be done and that, that you would come. If it's time to come, I pray for my family every day. I pray God would save them. But he knows if they're going to get saved or not. But I pray for him to come every day because he tells me to. And so look, we're seeing things. It says here in the one part of that, finally, faith is what the Bible believer uses to understand the future. Hey, what's going on in the world? We're seeing the weather get worse. Hey, the weather's unpredictable now. That these guys are getting worse and worse and worse at predicting the weather. Don't tell me it's not going to rain today. I'm pushing the man in the rains all day long. You know, I'm thinking, where are they coming from with this? Hey, a hurricane's supposed to end over here, and it's a cold way up north. They can't tell us no more. Hey, I should have been a meteorologist, praise God. I'd have made all that money. I could go outside and, and smell the air and look at the sky and tell you what's fixing to happen, amen? And that seems the way we're getting it. Look, we're even getting earthquakes in Florida now. And you know, if you've been paying attention, then I've just been getting some posts over my phone and watch the news because I'm telling you what, we're living in the last days. And I don't think we've seen nothing yet, church. I think that more's got coming. But the world's not getting better and better. It's getting worse and worse, and it's because of sin. Sin is destroying the world. You believe that tonight? Amen. And we know what's going on, and I like this one, and I've heard it used many times. But a big bang is coming. And they taught us about a big bang in school, but it just ain't happened yet. Amen. It's coming. A big bang's coming. And this place is going to come apart. And that will be the conclusion of everything that we now see. It'll be over. We'll see a new. It says right there, your two other blanks. There, and what's becoming the beginning of a whole new heavens and new earth. New heavens and new earth's coming, church, and I'm ready for it. Are you? Hey, are you ready for the thousand-year millennial reign and God to change everything back? I'm ready. Praise God, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. I can't wait till even that's all over and we don't see nothing of any kind of like that anymore. But indeed, it says to the person with this kind of faith, the invisible world is more real than the visible. You know what I think now? I get up in the morning and things might look gleam. And I used to stress out a little bit. We've got lots of rain and the winds start blowing. I don't know more, man, because you know it's what I can see. I believe in the things that I can't see. Amen. I believe God's capable of stopping anything, making anything happen. Hey, he's able to do anything and He's proved that to me. And I go to this church and I try to get us to this position every time we come into church is get us to worship. And when we come in in the morning because and start praising Him because He inhabits it. You understand? He inhabits praise. I'm not talking of when people come to church and praise, but real praise that you leave and go home with. Amen? And you're praising God on the way home. And you know what? You, you love that the, the, the message was preached. 
And I'll tell you this past week, you may God laid that message on me. And it was, it was we're all preaching. But it's what he told me to do. And it's what our church needs, amen. I think we need to hear it. It says, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith. If you put that right there, that's what that scripture says. For we walk by faith and not by sight. But it says, when we understand that every person has an invisible soul, and, uh, and we can look beyond skin height or what our abilities or disabilities. What's God say? He don't look upon the man. He looks upon the heart. And he, it doesn't matter how little or big you are or what, where you came from. We understand that there's a real heaven and real hell. Amen. The Bible teaches in Matthew 7, 13, to enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many know me that go in thereat. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth on the life, and few will be to find it. And we think about that tonight. There's a heaven and hell. It's real. Is that real to you tonight? And a lot of people, that's not real to you, but there, it's real. And I want everybody I can to get to heaven. We understand that God, not faith, is working all things out for good, like we talked about Romans 8, 28. And we understand why Jesus allowed himself to be crucified. Do you know why he died for you? There was something much more happening than just the tragic death of a man. He died to pay the price for our sins. And it had to be perfect sacrifice. And he's the only perfect one that ever walked this earth. I praise the Lord. The lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. I mean, it was already planned out. He already knew he had to do it. Amen? And then why? And God made us imperfect. He made, we made us perfect. Man sin. He gave us a free will. And now we're still living with that free will. He had to pay the penalty. Hey, he made all this up for us. Why? I think it's simply because he wanted, he could make us, he could make, make us worship him. If he took the air out of this room right now, you start begging God for air. I believe this, I believe God can make us worship him. He wants us to choose to worship and praise him and be his friend. You know he's your friend? He's not just your father, he's your friend. Praise God. Can you imagine what it's going to be like? What a friend we have. Let's praise God when we get to heaven. What is it going to be like? I, I can't wait, church. And we understand that the universe is filled with stars and planets and galaxies. And, you know, it just simply prove out His awesome glory. That we serve an awesome God. Let me read Psalms 119 to you. I'm almost done. Don't, don't worry, I'm not going to keep you here. All night, we're almost done. Get your paper there, you know that. Psalm 119. Or not 119, but 19. One and two, it says this. Actually, this whole, this whole chapter is given. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. It says, Day on today, though there is speech, and night on the night showeth knowledge. It says, There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, their, and their words to the end of the world, and them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. And rejoices as a strong man to run a race. He's going forth. His going forth is from the end of the heaven. And his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. That means we're simple people and God makes us wise through His Word. He makes us strong through His Word. And man, I'm that simple person that God has made strong. And Romans, and we went over this, I think, on Sunday, but Romans 1.20, real quickly, if you want to write that verse down beside there, for the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power of God, and so they are without excuse. Them guys got them giant telescopes looking out in the sky, and He says, the proof's in the pudding, it's out there. The proof that I'm God is there. He's given it to us. I know Psalms 33, 6 through 9 tells us that by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He said, He gathereth the water and the seas together as a heap, and he layeth up the depths of storehouses. God just holding back the sea. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done, and he commanded and it stood fast. I believe God tonight. I tell you what, I believe him. It tells you this in our quick review. How can a person find out where everything in the universe came from? Tell me that tonight. 
That's right. Through faith in His Word. That's the answer. Through faith in His Word, leaving the Bible. How did, did everything get created? Tell me tonight. Yeah, by the Word. That's right. It was spoken again by the Word of God. Are, are there things that exist that we cannot see? Yes. Amen. Uh, principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. And there's so much going on. I wish we could see it. And sometimes I think it scares people. Get the thing. Amen. Who can a Bible believer know more than when they just believe what God wrote in His Word? Teachers and the angels. That's what the, we, we learned in our study tonight. That's the, and then the elders. The wisdom of God, or the wisdom of man, is foolishness to God as we think about this. And what does consistence mean? It means holding something together like glue. God's holding this whole universe together. Everything's in its place, and we're seeing things go on in the stars and the heavens. And He said we'd see it. I think we're going to see more. I think great things are going to happen up there. But why doesn't everything just fly apart? Because He holds it all by the word of His power. Hebrews 1 3. Do you believe me tonight? I mean, is our faith strong? And I ask you tonight. If we have this invitation as we pray right here uh, tonight, we don't have to come to the altar. We're Jesus the altar. We have an altar. Would you pray that your faith would grow up tonight and that the faith of this church would be strong and that you know what people would grow in the Lord. Pray that tonight as we go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you and thank you for your mercy and grace. Lord, we thank you.